All right, so I'm starting to get this arm to stand out. And I started by dodging this side so it caught a little bit more light. When you dodge, sometimes it brings a lot of saturation into something. So I'm going to show you just all the forms of dodging. So I'm dodging the midtones. I'm at less than 20 on this arm. And you see that in the shadows, it's turning it blue. Then I can actually say dodge the shadows and bring a little bit more light into those dark shadows. I'm actually thickening the arm by doing this. And then I can go to the sponge tool and desaturate so that blue becomes more like the other shadows in the image. All right, now I can start blending it a little bit or getting it to stand out in this case. But first I blend with my soft edged eraser, first at 100% opacity, and I start biting away at some of those edges. But in this case, I want the arm to stand out. So I'm going to use the direct adjustments as it comes into the shoulder going to use these direct adjustments to uh, make it different than what's around it. So image adjustment, I'm going to go right to color balance and I'm going to really push it. In this case, a little redder, a little more yellow in the midtones. little more cyan in the highlights in the shadows I'm not sure maybe I push it both ways and kind of see so I'm trying to get it to kind of push out from this back and this is working in the subtle ways that I have think about there Okay, next, I can take my low, low opacity eraser, take it down from 100 down to like 40 or less, and I can start hitting it at this edge in these shadows a little bit. So it's not such an extreme shift. I already had gotten rid of the hard edge. And then where I need to, I might need to go back in and dodge, not dodge, burn, darken again, just that edge, just the midtones. And in some cases, I might need to sharpen things that I softened a little too much. So that the arm really at once looks believable, like it's popping out, but also feels like part of the same creature. And then there's also the blending of this layer I need to do underneath it, which is going to help. Okay, so let's leave that there for now, and let's move to the belly, where I'm going to do the same thing, except I don't have any... Uh, hard edges to blend so much. Well, I guess I do right there. So I'm going to first start at 100%. Get rid of the, the hardest edge. Hardest edges I don't want. I do want it underneath that belly. Oh, that's from a different layer. I don't need it. I don't need the toad to be here. Okay. Yeah, it's tricky. All these different kind of overlapping things. Let's get rid of that 100% hard edge just slightly. 
I'll keep it out on the outer edge. Get rid of it here, right underneath the arm. And then once I've gotten rid of that hard edge with 100%, then I go to around 40% and I start blending. And again, this will blend the textures and the lighting. So if there's like highlights I have to get rid of, it will reveal whatever's underneath. Almost looks like coral in the rock. And if there's places I need it to get darker, I can burn it. If there's places I need it to get lighter, I can dodge it. As long as I stick to the midtones, I'm just revealing in a very controlled way. And you can use this to blend any texture into any texture. And it helps to use those direct adjustments first, the color balance. And if it's not doing what you want, it's because you're not affecting the layer you thought you were affecting. Crop them down. Yeah, crop them down like we did to our sketch so that they're a little bit more than 8 by 10. So when you crop, it will show you, you know, what's activated until you hit return. Is that what you mean? All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is this, oh, let's see, the back of the toad here I need to cut out a little bit. I'm just going to try to get a good cutout to turn it in. Got to find that layer. So it's really nice to group the head so you don't have to go through all the head layers to see it. Find my... my organic cutout here as it starts to blend. Actually, let's see. There we go, then I'm gonna subtract this because I actually want all that overlap. Cut that out, it's gonna be on the right layer. Cut it out, good. Okay, now I wanna work on blending it into this bottom part and I'm going to start by burning that slug where it is going to overlap with my creature. It's the little foot underneath everything. And so you have a cast shadow. Burn it down, burn it down, burn it down, just the midtones. I'm not erasing here, I'm just darkening selectively, especially behind that arm. And you never burn shadows because then you can get to black very quickly. Sometimes you can burn highlights if you need to. But let me show you what happens if you burn shadows. This goes to black. All right. Now, that's looking better. I go in to the layer above it that I want to blend and I use my 100% soft eraser and I bite away from that hard edge so it starts to blend Oops. sometimes it reveals things you don't expect okay good and then if you want to, you can blend further with a lower opacity. But that's usually for soft into soft textures. And this one is more of a, a hard into soft texture. So I think I'm just going to stick with my 100% and just kind of find that edge I want to keep between the two.
All right, what's next? I gotta cut out the bottom of the slug with my lasso at 0.8 pixel feather. I'm just gonna find that really weird kind of alien edge that's the foot of the slug. I can do it in chunks if I want. I need to be on the right layer. No matter how much you'll do this, you'll we all tend towards certain mistakes. They are not mistakes, they are lessons, and we learn those lessons over and over again. They do not end. Notice I am not taking the shadow underneath this snail's foot, even though in this case it would look pretty cool to have that drop shadow. That's because we want our composited creatures to not have any external lighting, you know, no drop shadows that they cast because we're putting them into environments that we choose. Then I need to cut out up here the little feathers. So many layers, and we only need five. Not outside of the creature, right? So I don't want a shadow that the foot is casting, yeah, because we'll be adding that as we put it into environments. Yeah, internally, those are those are called form shadows. It wouldn't look very three-dimensional probably without those. All right. Now, deadline style. Are there's there's things that can work better that I can fix quickly? If I squint, yes. The clear thing is that we talked a lot about silhouette, right? And about arms in this case, like giving a silhouette that makes sense. I don't have any arm out here. So what can I do quickly to try to address that silhouette issue? I can play with this arm first to get its silhouette to come out a little bit from that, that base, kind of like that. That will make it a little bit more usable. And then, yes, I can internally composite it as well and use it on the other side. So duplicate it, transform it, kind of line it up just squinting so where the silhouette fits, fits, move it behind. And then I'm going to use a little bit of warping so it doesn't look like I say often too copy pasty. <laughs> I can even use warp to kind of turn that thumb around. This is a rust job. This is not ideal. But what I can do is internally composite that thumb, command J, warp it or rotate it. You know, internal compositing, then go to the layer behind it and erase away with 100% the source material and then blend it in with 100% eraser. So, still some edges that can be refined. This is going to be the beginning of our next proving ground. Still some coloring that could be worked out. When I grew this arm, notice it kind of messed up some of my blending. So, we just want to be know that we have full control of all of these things and we're always working to get a better result so i'm going to use clone stamp to clean it up as the beginning of our next assignment proving ground which is when we put this creature into an environment but this is working pretty well the last thing i think i can do with that back arm because it's catching light in a way that doesn't quite work is I can merge it with its thumb, select both, Command-D, e, and then I, I just go to Direct Adjustments, go to Levels, going to push its midtones a little bit darker, limit its highlights so it feels more in shadow. 